Another viewer question, and this time this is a two-part question. It started on YouTube, then moved on to Reddit, and I'm going to answer both. So this question is from Pat Sprongs, aka Flora Decora, on Reddit, and the question is. Please make a video about the chemically treated weird hybrid plants being posted on Reddit and elsewhere lately. I heard it can kill plants but lots of people don't know about them and you seem like you would be able to explain it well. And then on Reddit, Hey Chuck, I messaged you on YouTube about chemically treated succulents and you asked to see some of the Reddit threads I was talking about and I was given two threads. Some people are claiming it's like manipulation. I thought this was true until recently someone told me it's a chemical treatment and that could stunt growth or kill the plant. Now I'm confused, lol. You're an educated grower and I thought maybe you would have some insight into this matter. Thanks for taking time to listen to my question. Your videos are awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. And first of all, let's talk about variegation. Variegation is one of the most commonly seen forms of spontaneous mutation. Cress and monstros are the other commonly seen forms of mutation. The variegates we see today are results of carefully selected cultivation and hybridization. While variegated forms can look lovely, I only have a few variegates in my collection because I'm not really that fond of them. <laughs> and as you know, some of the variegates can get very expensive, so lucky for me. I think it's a cool coincidence that most of my variegates are aeoniums. There must be something about them. So here are my variegated aeoniums. The first one you're seeing here is the sunburst, and followed by the starburst. They sort of look the same because they are actually variegated forms of the aeonium David Bramwelli. So the fully variegated version is the sunburst, and a partial reversion of that, somewhere in between, would be the starburst. Up next, you're looking at the Aeonium Castello Paive variegated. It's the small one you see right here. And lastly, one of the non-Aeonium variegates that I have is the Sedum Aurora. It's a variegated version of the regular rubber tinctum or the jelly beans. And one common factor that you'll see on all of them is that the way the lines form, the variegates or the change in colors, they are all parallel to the leaf. They are not radial or going outwards, or at least they are not perpendicular to the leaf. Now on to the topic, about these new variegates which kinda looks odd and unnatural since compared to the, the naturally forming variegates, the colors are not parallel to the leaves and naturally this has gotten many people curious and some even concerned. There's been a few speculation about this. I think the theory went that if you keep covering the center then it will lose, it will fade and lose the, the intensity of the colors that it has and the outer, the outer part of the leaves would remain the same. Let's take this Agaboides Mira for example. So if I, the theory, according to the theory, if you just place something in the middle here, let's say this piece of paper and just cover it this way the whole time, then the inner leaves would lose their colors and this, is, this commonly happens when the plant is etiolating. But I don't think that's the case because just covering one part of the leaf means that the other parts of the leaf or the other parts of the rosette would still be getting enough sunlight and that means that they would still be producing enough food. I think this is unlikely because it's not the whole plant or at least not the whole leaf that's being covered so they would still be getting enough sunlight from the rest of the leaves. So let's toss that theory out. Another theory is that the plant must be being fed with something or watered with something that induces this variegation and I tend to side with this theory. Some people are calling it magic drops and I think there might be some merit to this theory 
might be the case actually. Because if you look at the way the variegation grows, it starts off at the very center and it moves outwards. And this to me suggests that it starts with the stem and onto the new growth at the center. And to be a bit technical about this, it starts with the apical meristem. stem. The way that I think this works is that the plant is watered with a solution that contains this chemical and it goes into the soil. The, the roots of the plant pick it up and it goes into the stem. And finally it goes up into the apical meristem which causes all of the new growth, the leaves of the new growth to form without pigments like chlorophyll or anthocyanin. And the lack of these pigments uh, reduces it to, to the base pale or just yellowish color and judging from that color of being yellow I think it just blocks chlorophyll and anthocyanin from forming leaving only carotenoid which is the pigment that causes the, the leaves to go yellow or orange or brown especially when they're about to die and just in case you're wondering about the other pigments the chlorophyll of course is what gives the green and anthocyanin would be the blues, the purples, the reds, the pinks, blacks, the bright colors. So going back, the new leaves will form without those other pigments, just may maybe just the carotenoids. And it will keep doing that until the solution in the plant or the chemicals have been exhausted. And after which, the new growth would be showing those other pigments again. It will start going green again and whatever other colors it should be. So essentially, this lack of pigmentation is temporary because eventually the plant will normalize and outgrow it. It might seem harmless but if given too much of that solution then the whole rosette would be lacking pigmentation, there would be no chlorophyll and that means that it would not be able to produce food for itself until new leaves with chlorophyll forms again. And depending on the time of year, that might take a long time especially when, it, when they are out of the growing season. So in short, I think it is just as bad as painting the leaves because it's going to inhibit the process of photosynthesis which means that the plant would not be able to create its own food and your only course of action is to wait until the plant outgrows these leaves and starts growing normal leaves again and that type of variegation is not stable because it will go away. So there's such a thing as stable variegation and unstable variegation because plants go because plants do variegate all the time but it is not always stable they would revert back to the regular coloring so this is why sometimes you'd see that some of your plants would grow a leaf with some stripes on it then the next ones won't have that same stripe so it's a lot of the draw the stable variegates have been doing this for quite a while and they have been carefully selected and carefully bred just to exaggerate this very trait. Making variegated plants and keeping them stable is really hard work and that's ex that explains why they're quite expensive. In closing, I think it mainly has to do with your views on fake colors. Are you a purist and would rather have natural colors? Or are you attracted to the unnatural or fake colors? And to put things into perspective, I'm going to lump these fake variegated plants with painted plants. And if you're the type who don't mind these things, then why not? But on the other hand, if you're like me, who wants the plants to grow as fast as they could, propagate as fast as they can, then avoid these things. Because the lack of pigmentation slows down the growth of the plant. For me, for someone like me who likes big plants, this is not a good thing. So, with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.